Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we are going to capture packets from the command prompt using Wireshark's dump cap. Now, for the people who know this, I've written in the past about dump cap versus T Shark, so I'm not going to cover that. We are going to use dump cap for many reasons that I've documented already. Uh, just the short version of it, dump cap is more efficient than T Shark, and that's good enough for me. Next. Things to do. So the first thing we need to do is make sure Wireshark is in your path. If it's not, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next slide. We're going to determine which interface index maps to what NIC on your machine. So depending on your, your actual configuration, you'll have a ton of adapters, or you may have one or two, so, and I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to determine your capture parameters and the location of your trace files. Please pay attention where your files go, because by default, dump cap will dump it in a temp folder and if you're not paying attention you'll never find them and you're probably gonna run out of space because you have a bunch of huge files scattered throughout your temp files next we're gonna test check and if we mess up we go back to step two and so on and so on and then finally if that all works then we capture our packets with our syntax all right adding Wireshark to your path this is how it looks like. You go into your system properties. Uh, depends if it's Windows 7, 8, 10, all that kind of jazz. But it's documented very, very well in Microsoft. So you don't have to go digging very hard. Just add it to your path. If you're not sure if it's in your path, you want to quickly test without going through all this nonsense, just go to a command prompt and type dump cap space dash lowercase h. And when you do that, you should see dump cap options and the help screen and all that kind of jazz. If it says bad command or not found, obviously it's not in your path. The alternative is to go into your Wireshark folder and run your commands. The problem is it's in your programs folder. So you may have problems creating files. Don't get into that. Just create a path statement for your machine and that way Wireshark will be in that path. End of story. I've bolded all the common commands that you're going to need as you play with Dumpcap. There's a bunch in there, but I, I took a bunch out because it's just not relevant and you're probably never going to use them. One is dash I for your interface, which we are going to use today. Dash F is a capture filter. Snap length, we're going to cover what that means as well. Dash capital D, uppercase D, D as in dump. We're going to do that in the next screen. And you'll see it'll list all your interfaces and that way you know what index to use. Of course, when you create your file, stay away from using the default. Create a file name, obviously, and a path if you can. Ring buffers, we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, capture comments. Now, I did not use this option in these examples, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can capture, create a comment, put it into the capture file, and therefore you'll have some documentation built into your trace file. That's it. Simple. Step one, determine which interface index maps to what NIC. So from the command prompt, as I said earlier, dump cap space dash uppercase or capital D and you'll see a list of stuff. In my case, I have 12 adapters, and that includes obviously Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth, and then there's a whole bunch of virtual interfaces that I have. So there's gonna be a whole host of stuff that you may or may not see on your screen. Just pay attention to the one you wanna use. In my case, it's number eight, that's Wi-Fi. So from now on, I have to remember eight, 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 eight. And please don't you type eight, because you may not have an interface called eight. I'm gonna test it out. Dump cap space dash I, lowercase I for interface, space eight. And when you do that, you'll see it says capturing on the adapter name. In my case, it's Wi-Fi. It tells you the default path, which I warned you is your temp folder. So when you're done, please go to your temp folder and clean out your trace files. And then when you press control C, that's how you stop it. Control C is your universal break sequence. And then that will stop the capture for you. Now, for the people that are interested, that default name that's created for you has a specific syntax. Wireshark is obvious, underscore the name of the interface, in this case it's Wi-Fi, and then the next bunch of characters is going to be the year, month, day, beside that is going to be hours, minutes, seconds, underscore, here's the truth, I have no idea what these next six characters are. So this is the Wireshark gods have chosen some random bunch of stuff to make sure that this file name is unique. That's good enough for me. All right. On to the command to capture and stop your trace file. And this is a very common request you get from the command line. You want to start and stop a trace. In this case, we're going to stop after eight megabytes of data. And the option is pretty straightforward. It's going to be a dash A 
file size 8,000. Please remember that we're talking 8,000 is 8,000 thousand bytes, so it's eight megabytes. And then lastly, dash W to write this to a file name because we don't want the automagic stuff. We want to give it a name and I called it 8MB capture. Please use something that's self-explanatory so you don't have to guess what you were trying to do earlier. And off you go to the races. You'll see that the packet capture counter start incrementing. When it's done, you don't have to press control C. When you hit eight megs, it will stop. If you don't want to wait for eight megs, press control C and you will have your trace file. Want to check it out? Just DIR. And you can see there's 8MB capture.pcapng and it's an 8 meg file. Ta da! Next one, you're probably going to want to filter on an IP. So, till this point, we were capturing everything, and you might not want that. You might want something going, for example, to 8.8.8.8. That's Google's public DNS. And in this case, we did dump cap interface 8, it's my Wi Fi. Dash F is my filter, and in double quotes, you put your filter that you want to use. This is the capture filter syntax, not display filter, capture filter syntax. Remember that. Dash W, it's going to write it to a file, and again, I called it 8888.pcapng. And in this case, there is no stop trigger, so I have to press Control C to stop my capture. And when I'm done, there's my trace file. This is a very, very sensitive topic for some people, and it's called packet slicing. So instead of capturing every single byte in every single packet, you might not want that for a bunch of reasons. Reason one, legally, you might not be allowed to see the data in the packet because there may be some sensitive business stuff in there. So you only want to capture the first 100 bytes that tells you IPs, port numbers, and a little bit of the application stuff. You know who's going where and what they're doing. The other reason is you want to save disk space. So you only want to save the first 100 bytes. You don't want to save the entire packet. And the last one is probably the data is encrypted or non-legible anyway. So why save all that data? So by using a, a packet slice, you can stretch the capture for a lot longer. The option for that is dash lowercase s for snap length. And in my case, 100 bytes. I also put a capture filter on mine just to be a little fancy and I have a file being created called 100b underscore slice. You can see the file got created, you do a directory and there's your file. Last one, you want to capture a certain number of files at a certain size and you don't want it to stop. So at the very beginning we had it capture and stop after 8 meg. I don't want to do that, that's like the first 8 meg. In this case I want it to go and when I stop it I want the last bunch of files. So in this case, we're going to use the dash B file size. I want one meg, so it's 1024. Dash B is how many files I want in my buffer. In this case, it's two. And the name I want to give it is two underscore one MB files dot Now Wireshark is going to automatically give you at the end of that file name, a number for the file. Again, year, month, day, and all that kind of jazz that we saw earlier. And that way, every single file is unique. Now, here's the important part. You're going to see all the files appear, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, as you see on my screen. But when you press Control c you are only going to have the last two files. That's it. So in my case, I'm only going to see 9 and 10. 2 through 8 is gone. So this is why it's important to pay attention to how big you want your files to be. Too big, they're not manageable. That's going to take your machine a long time to crunch through it. Too small, you're possibly going to miss stuff. That's it, folks. So there's a bunch of examples on how to use dump cap. Have some fun. Now get to work. Bye for now.